I'm Neil Flint and I'm the Managing Director of VIP, Vet Insurance Protector. And I'm going to be talking to you today about making the most of your pet insurance. It is very important that you keep your dog's vaccinations or alternatives to vaccinations up to date. It is also important that you have your dog routinely checked by your vet. The advantages of being able to catch conditions and illnesses early is fantastic because you are able to keep down your excesses and potentially keep down your premiums in the future. If your dog is not vaccinated, it does not mean the insurer is not going to pay any claims. It simply means they would not pay any claims that are as a result of your dog not being vaccinated. If your dog was to break its leg, the insurer is not in a position to say this is as a result of your dog not being vaccinated and therefore your veterinary bills would be met. If your dog has been diagnosed with a particular illness or condition and it requires a great amount of work and it appears this bill is very high, we would suggest maybe shopping around to get a second opinion. Whilst the vast majority of vets in the UK are very highly ethical, like in any business there are always elements that are different. By shopping around you can be assured that the price you've been given is right and if it is hugely different, this would give you the opportunity to discuss this with the original vet. Maybe it could be a difference of opinion between the vets as to the treatment that should be carried out. Or maybe one veterinary practice is higher than the other because the equipment is better and maybe the staff more highly trained. Having all the information will allow you to make an informed choice. Many of you watching this may know that I write a column for Dogs Today magazine. I am the pet insurance doctor for this magazine and have been for over 10 years. I must have received thousands of letters over these 10 years, often from disgruntled policy holders. I have really enjoyed being able to tell a client whether or not the insurance company is right or wrong. It is impossible to give hard and fast rules on who is right and who is wrong on claims not being met. By coming to somebody like ourselves to simply ask the question has allowed many thousands of Dogs Today readers to be assured that when their claims haven't been met by an insurance company it's because of genuine reasons. However, there have also been many occasions where insurers haven't paid claims and we have ensured that those readers' claims have been paid by being able to provide the correct advice. This doesn't always mean that the insurance company is just simply looking to not pay this could be something as simple as just the way the vet has explained it on the claim form. This could lead to the insurer becoming confused and thinking that it's not covered. Often we can get between this and resolve these issues and ensure that people's claims are paid. It is very important that you get the right cover for your pet from the outset. Don't be tempted to buy cheaper cover because your pet is younger or because you think your pet is fit. Illnesses and accidents can come from nowhere. Many people have assumed that you can jump between covers. I would ask you to pause and think for a moment. Is an insurance company really going to allow you to move from, say, a 12-month cover to a lifetime cover if your dog is in need of lifetime of treatment? We would strongly recommend that you buy the right policy at the outset for your pet. Most insurance companies want informing of any treatment within 30 days, irrespective of whether or not you have claimed. Most insurance companies, once informed, are happy to wait until you send in your claim form. Your vet will complete this claim form on your behalf. Some vets charge a fee for this. An acceptable fee would be 10 or 15 pounds. Many vets don't charge for this, once the insurance company has the claim form, it will assess whether or not the details on that claim form fit in to the policy. If it does, then your claim will be paid. The claim form will state whether the vet is to be paid or whether it is yourself that is to be paid with you then paying the vet. If you ever have a complaint with your insurer, then you need to look at your policy document complaints procedure. This generally is, you make your first complaint to the insurer. You detail what your complaint is about. The insurer then has eight weeks to respond. 
If the insurer has not responded or you are not happy with the response, then you are able to make a complaint to the insurance ombudsman who will make a binding decision. Finally, making the most of your pet insurance. Well, I really hope that all your premiums are wasted because we certainly want your dog to be fit and healthy. But in the event that you do need to make the most of your pet insurance, we can't stress how important it is that you make sure you have the right insurance from the outset. By having the right insurance, it will ensure that if you do need to make any claims, that you're not going to be left unsatisfied. Mm -hmm.